you to take your Bibles, if you will, this morning to uh, Lamentations. Um, as uh, as we as you turn there, uh, the children are dismissed for junior church. We have a program right out back here in the back, back room. Um, and so uh, they may be dismissed. Take your Bibles this morning, if you will, to Lamentations chapter 3. And I forgot the poem there. Uh, it's 321, uh, 323, verse 21 through 24. Um, we're uh, in, uh, in the Pew Bibles. I grabbed the Pew Bible just so I could uh, find it and let you know the page number. But uh, in the Pew Bible, that will be page 713. Um, actually, 712 and 713. Uh, but uh, take the Bibles, and we want to take just a few minutes today, and we want to look at, um, at this text. I told Pam as I was preparing, I said, uh, you know, my message is awful short today. And um, she says, good, because we won't have much time. Um, but uh, I, I really want to take a few minutes and look a little bit at Jeremiah's hope. Here in Lamentations chapter 3, in verses 21 down to verse 24, there's a, there's a change of attitude that takes place in, um, in Jeremiah's uh, teaching in this book. Most of us know that Lamentations is written by Jeremiah, and it's written as a book of sorrow for what he has seen. He just, uh, he, he saw his nation be destroyed. He saw his um, his family or his families, his neighborhoods, being taken into captivity. Um, he walked around in chapter chapter three. It almost seems like he walks around with a a cloud of um, you know that black cloud over his head, and he woe unto me type of thing. Um, you know, then we, we we see verses such as this. He says, "I am a man." who has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath in verse 1 of chapter 3. You know, he has seen this affliction, and he's, he's sorrowing over what, what the country is going through, what, it, what, what Jerusalem, his beloved Jerusalem, is going through. It's been destroyed. And he's crying out. Now, if you study Jeremiah, you find that Jeremiah is a book on the warning of sin. And he, he, he warns Israel and says, wait a minute, if you don't repent from your sin, God's going to punish you. And then in Lamentations, we see him looking back and saying, look, what God has done. But it's interesting, he comes in the midst of all this sorrow, he comes to verse 21. And in verse 21, we see the hope in the midst of sorrow. And, uh, and look what it says. It says there in verse 21, it says, this I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. Then in verse 22, familiar verse 22 and 23, it says, though the Lord's mercy, um, or through the Lord's mercy, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great. <coughs> Sorry, great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I have hope. Let's pray. Father, uh, teach us here this morning that we would understand. Lord, there is hope. There is hope in the midst of, of the chaos that's going on in the world today. Lord, you have given us direction. You have given us um, this ministry for 150 years. And Lord, there is a hope for tomorrow. And Lord, I thank you for that. And so Lord, you minister to us here today. Open our hearts, open our minds, be with my words. That would be uh, your words, not mine. I do thank you in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. See, here in this passage, we see Jeremiah's hope. He, uh, he starts out and he says this in verse 21. He says this. I recall. What a wonderful, wonderful way of starting this message and starting his praise to God by saying this. I recall. The, the term recall, the word that he uses, means to bring to mind. It has the idea of returning or turning back or this idea of 
doing it again, okay? Um, you know, it's that, it's that turning back to where it, he was. And, and, and what I think what Jeremiah is trying to say is, is as all of these things are taking place, I mean, I was, uh, I was shocked this morning. I was listening to the news as I was getting ready. And, um, you know, Philadelphia has had, you know, all these shootings that have taken place. We heard the sh uh, this, this, what was it, this past week, maybe last week, where, where the shooting down in Texas, that, 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 uh, the, the children that were killed, um, they have said that, um, that every, uh, there has been so much, so many mass shootings in America uh, since the beginning of the year. Um, you know, they, they said a number on the news that just uh, floored me. I didn't write that number down, but it was like four, four mass shootings per day since the beginning of the, of, of the year. I mean, it's, it's awful. And a mass shooting they define as a shooting where, uh, where four or more people were either killed or injured. That's considered a mass shooting. They, and they said there were like four a day. And it's like, it, it, that just blew my mind. I mean, where are we as a country? Jeremiah is looking at, at his country and he's saying it's fallen apart. The enemy has come and has destroyed us. The enemy has taken us and, and, and has, has, has scattered us. And then he says, I've turned my thoughts. I've turned my thoughts. You know, it's so easy for us to think on the bad things. It's so easy for us to, to dwell on the negative. I love that verse there in, um, in Philippians chapter 4, where it says, think on these things. Whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are, 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 are right, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things. It goes on and it talks about these things. And, 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 and the Word of God tells us that, you know, think on these things. Why? Because our minds need to be taught to turn our eyes upon Jesus. That's where it is. And Jeremiah, as he was overwhelmed with the things going on. Listen, I'm, can, I can almost guarantee you are overwhelmed with things going on in your life. Problems, marital problems, financial problems, political problems, you know, whatever it is. The stress of this world. The, Jeremiah gives us this picture of hope. And he says, I recalled, I remembered, I thought back. And I brought my, back, my, my, my mind back to the understanding that God is a God who loves us and has promised blessing towards us. It's interesting, in Jeremiah chapter 29, Jeremiah probably thought of his own words when, he, when, when, he, when his mind went back to the Lord. But in Jeremiah 29, in verse 11, it says, For I know the thoughts that I have towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. And I, I really believe that in the midst of all these problems and all this sorrow, he's, he's, he's just lamenting before God and he's, he's crying out before him. And all of a sudden he remembers that God has said, listen, there is a future and a hope that I have for you. And it changes his heart. That's right. And my friends, that's what we need today. You and I, are looking at a bleak future. We really are. Our country is no longer a nation under God. It's gone, it's gone way from that. Praise the Lord for those who stand on biblical principles. But you know, it's coming a day where I believe we're going to be persecuted for our faith. Really coming to that. <clears throat> but the Word of God says, don't worry. Don't cry over it. Because our God is greater than he that is in the world. What a great promise that is. You know, I really think that Jeremiah understood as he was starting to think, and he was, what, what he was recalling, I think, was the almightiness, and I don't know if that's a proper word, but the almightiness of God. God is Jehovah, the almighty God who can do all things. And I love that verse that Isaiah taught in Isaiah 40 and verse 31. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. What a wonderful promise that is. You and I need to learn to wait upon the Lord. See, this is where Jeremiah's hope was. It was, it was about waiting upon God and allowing God to build him up 
And the word, the, the, the verse says, <coughs> they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Listen, we live in a society where we as Christians tend to faint. Why? Because it's hard. It's difficult. And God says, listen, I give you a hope. You know, as we start this adventure of another 150 years um, here in Chester, and I know we've talked about should we move out of Chester and, and, and we've talked about why do we move away from our mission field. This is our mission field. You know, I was, I was, <coughs> we were at a yard sale yesterday. I told, I told Pam we would get out of the house. And so we went up to a yard sale in Springfield and we were walking around. And we didn't find anything. We really don't want anything. And, you know, especially, and I, and I don't want to offend anybody who does yard sale. But I really didn't need anybody else's junk, okay? Um, and, and a lot of times that's what it is, you know. Uh, I know Tom's looking at me. You're right, you know, some people's junk is, is other person's treasure. I understand that. Okay, but we're walking, we're heading back to the car. And <coughs> one, of the, one of the ladies, and I have absolutely no idea who she was. One of the ladies says, Pastor Free, Pastor Randy. And I turn and I look and I'm trying to... Look at the kids. Did we minister to the kids? Did we, you know, we were talking and she said, she said, Pastor, she said this morning, or yesterday morning, she said, I was in your parking lot getting vegetables. Our little ministry is ministering to people that we might not even know. You know, that's a blessing. You know, God has commissioned us for as long as we can, and I don't know how long it's going to be. I mean, we go up to Philadelphia, we go up to the market, we walk into the market, and, and we have now people who have, who have boxes and crates of stuff that are waiting for us to pick up. Because they know we're coming. And they give us, I mean, I mean there's some weeks, I think it was two weeks ago, um, we, had, we had six pallets this high off the ground of, of, of crates of vegetables that we brought out to the car. Okay, three of them were delivered by them. They brought them out by forklifts. The rest we had to carry. But these, these are all that God started and God did. You know, we, we, we have problems and we have issues and we look at the neighborhood we live in and we say, you know, should we, should we stay another 150 years in Chester? But God is doing some wonderful things in our midst and we as God's children, when, when, when the cl dark cloud comes over our heads and we say, woe unto us because, <coughs> because this is happening or this is happening. We need to remember that God is using a bag of carrots or a bag of potatoes that we put outside. I thought it was wonderful for the longest time I've come over and I've tried to police what's going on outside. And I decided I'm not doing that anymore. So two, two of our volunteers, ladies who don't even attend the church, have decided they're going to do that. And they kept that they kept that stand filled until about ten o'clock yesterday, just doing the work themselves. And you know something? That's a blessing. And it's a blessing to be able then to turn around and hold hands outside and pray with our volunteers right in the parking lot and encourage them and encourage those people who are looking at us. We had one man who came and he says, listen, I don't, I, I don't believe the same as you do. I said, I don't care. Join the prayer. Let's pray to God. He's a Muslim man. The seed is being sown. Okay, 150 years, God's called us to attack. And there is the hope that Jeremiah has. How? By recalling what God has done. We need to stand in Him. It's interesting it goes on in this text. And, and there's two questions I asked with regards to this text. The first question was, what was Jeremiah's hope built on? He had this hope, but what was it built on? Look what it says in verses 22 and 23. It says this, Through the Lord's mercy, we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faith. Those two verses answer that question. It's upon his mercies 
but we stand in hope. It's upon his mercies. The hymn writer, um, um, actually, uh, the, the hymn writer, I think, got it right when he said, Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. I think that, I think that course is wrong. Um, you pull things off the internet, it's not always the right words, okay? Um, but but listen, listen to this in verse 2. It says, are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will be singing as the days go by. Why? Because you're recalling what God has done. Psalm, uh, the psalmist uh, makes it clear in Psalm 136. 136, I uh, was just studied in our, uh, in our Reformers Unanimous program. Uh, but Psalm 136 is one of those psalms, I think there's like, like 20 verses or 20, 21 verses in it. And, and, and in each verse it says something God has done for Israel. And then it says... Um, it says, by the mercies, his, his mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. And that mercy is this mercy that I'm talking about here. It's his loving kindness. The loving kindness of God has done wonderful things. And, and Jeremiah says, I can stand in hope because of the loving kindness of God. You and I can stand in hope because of the loving kindness of God in your life and in my life. But that's not the only thing. It says also here that his compassions, they fail not. See, the Lord is compassionate. The Lord looks at us and he, he feels for us. He understands us. Why did God send his only begotten son to die on the cross for you and for me? Because when God looked at mankind, he saw that mankind was helpless and could not save himself. And so God had compassion on us. And so in his love, he, um, he, he sent his only begotten son to die on Calvary's tree so that when you put your faith and your trust in him, you can be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ and you can be changed forever. That's what the word of God says. That's the compassion that gives us hope. If God cares about us enough to send His only begotten Son, is He going to, to protect us? Yeah. Is He going to care for us? Yeah. Is He going to help us? Listen, when you're going to the doctor and the doctor looks at you and says, I have bad news. I forget who I was talking to. And um, they made a comment about how, how they were told by their doctor that there was bad news. And, and, and the longer I talked with this person, the more it seemed like there was piling up of these problems in the world. And so I stopped them and I said, wait a minute, before we go any further, let's take it to the great physician. The one who can help you and the one who can get you through it. That's Jesus Christ. That's what you and I have, that's why you and I have hope for tomorrow. When tomorrow looks hopeless. He is one who does that for us. Isn't that great to know? You know, the word of God is full of verses on compassion. In Mark chapter 6, in verse 34, it says, And Jesus, when he had come out, saw the great multitude and was moved with compassion for them. This is when he fed the 5,000. It says that, the, that they were like sheep without, uh, without having a shepherd, so he began to teach them many things. In Matthew, in that text in Matthew, it says that he began to to, to heal their, their, uh, their, their, their diseases. He started to teach them and heal them. Um, we find in, in Luke chapter 7, Jesus is walking by and he sees this funeral procession going on. And, and this, this lady, she's just weeping for her only son. And the Word of God says that when Jesus saw her, he, was, he, he had compassion on her and said, and said to her, do not weep. And he goes up to this child who was, who was laying in the coffin. It was an open coffin. And he goes on and he touches the child. And the child sits up. And the child starts speaking. And the word of God says a great fear came upon all that were there. The word of God tells us that God is a God who has compassion. on What a wonderful thought that is. But you know, that's not all. We also find a second question. And that second question is, um, is where is our hope today? See, we have hope, the hope in, G in, in Jesus. But my question to you is, where is your hope 
today. First Peter chapter 1 and verses 3 and 4 tells us that our hope. Look what it says. Blessed be the God of our Father of our, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Where is your hope? I hope it's not, or I pray it's not in your banking account. Because your banking account won't last very long. Not with the prices of everything going up. I hope your hope, I hope, I pray your hope. See, I, I have to be careful of the words I use here. I pray your hope is not on people. Because if you hope in me as your pastor, I will fail you. I will. I put my clothes on the same way as everybody else. I'm nobody special. God has called me. God has called uh, Daryl to sing. God has called me to preach and to be a pastor. They're just, just different gifts that God has called us, and we all roll up our sleeves and we serve God the way God wants us to serve Him. But if your hope is in a person, that person will eventually fail you. That person will disappoint you. Why are there so many divorces today? Why are there so many problems in families today? It's because one person disappoints the other. You know, when I, when, I, when I met Pam, I thought she was just everything. And then we got married and I realized she just wasn't as much as I thought she was. I'm in big trouble this afternoon. Do you know something? She found it in me, the same thing. That I'm probably even worse than what she is. Okay, did I get out of that? Probably not, okay. But that's all right. You, you know what I'm talking But isn't that the reality of life? Because when we're dating, everything's fine. You know, we have this, oh, I mean, everything, and then we get married, and boom, everything changes. I mean, that's the reality of it. You know, the only thing that keeps Pam and I together is Jesus Christ. The only thing that gets us through to tomorrow is Jesus Christ. The only thing that will take us as a church the next 150 years is Jesus Christ. I love that song about that church that closed. The problem with that church that closed is somewhere Jesus Christ was left outside. Somewhere in time. Because I'll tell you this, if Jesus Christ is inside, the church is growing. We need to understand that our hope is in Jesus Christ. As our Savior, as we're set to, we're told here in this verse, or as our provider. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the stone words. I'm not going to quote those six verses. Verse 4 says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me, thy rather thy staff and comfort me. In the presence of my enemies, thou preparest the table. I said I wasn't going to quote most of it. I think I just quoted most of it. But, but you know, the, the, the reality of that song is that, that David is saying, Listen, my God, my shepherd, because I've put my faith and my trust in Jesus Christ, not in a church. I cringe every time somebody comes to me and says, you know, Pastor, I'm, I'm, I'm Presbyterian, or I'm Catholic, or I'm Methodist, or I'm, I don't care what you are, to be honest with you. I care what relationship you have. Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? And the only way to have that is to accept the gift that he has given to you. Call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That's what the Word of God says. We need to understand that if we're going to have God as our Savior, then He's going to be our provider. And a lot of people tell me, Pastor, I don't understand. Why isn't God in this picture? Why wasn't God down in that school protecting those kids? Because back in the 60s, they said, listen, we want God out of our school. We need to understand that the Word of God makes it very clear that when we have God as our shepherd, God will be our provider. And my friends, we can, we can stand today with great hope, that hope of Jeremiah, and we can say without a doubt in our mind, without, without any, any 
and you know any uncertainty that God is our hope for tomorrow. Why? And isn't that exactly what Jeremiah says? Look what he says there in verse 24. In verse 24, he says, The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in Him. My friends, as we start this month of praising God for His faithfulness, for His promises that we can stand upon, and for His promises that He keeps without fail. We need to understand and we need to, we need to realize that our hope has to be grounded in Jesus Christ and in Him alone. My friends, is your hope grounded in Jesus Christ? That's my question for you today. Let's close with a word of prayer. Father, I thank You. You are a faithful God. Your, 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 your mercies never fail. Your, your, your faithfulness never fails. Your compassions never fail. Lord, they're, they're new every morning. We read all these verses. We, know, we understand that. <clears throat> but first of all, Lord, there has to be that relationship with you. And Lord, I don't know who's listening. I don't know that the hearts of everybody in this room. But I do know that, Lord, when I was three years old, I accepted Jesus Christ. As Darrell said, I was in church all my life. I was exposed to Christianity. I was exposed to Jesus Christ. And at three, I, need, I knew I needed Jesus in my heart if I was going to go to heaven. It wasn't about religion. It wasn't about, the, it wasn't about the church. It wasn't about any of that. It was about a relationship with you. And Lord, I pray that everybody in this room, everybody listening, would know for sure before they leave here that they have the hope of eternal life. But Lord, that hope is not just the hope for eternal life. It's that hope for tomorrow as well. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to understand and have that hope. I do thank you. In Christ Jesus' name. Before I say amen, has the Lord spoken to your heart today? Has the Lord said, hey, I, 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 Pastor, I understand. I need that hope. I keep on forgetting to look to Jesus. I need to recall on a regular basis. Pray for me that I would just continue remembering that Jesus, He, God, is Jehovah, the Almighty God. He will do and He will guide and He will give hope and comfort. Is that your, your prayer that you would constantly go back to Him? If that is, would you just raise your hand and say, Pastor, pray for me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, thank you for the hands. Lord, minister to their hearts today. Help us this week. Lord, it's so easy to take our eyes off of you Lord, but you never fail. Help us to keep our eyes on you at all times. I do thank you in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand where, where you're at today, uh, just where you are, and we're going.